Well, hello, let me add my welcome to Ashes. It's uh, lovely to have the privilege of being able to, sp to speak uh, today. Let me pray for us as we begin. Our Father, thank you for your word to us. Thank you that we can feed on Jesus as we chew it over. And so we pray that you would be nourishing us from your word by the power of your spirit today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we've been thinking about uh, how important it is to believe in Jesus over the last few weeks, haven't we? Uh, we've seen that we have eternal life if we feed on Jesus' words and believe them and follow him. Uh, we need to be true disciples, followers of Jesus, who are getting to know him better and uh, doing that all the time and, and who are learning from him all the time too. But what are the traits of a real disciple? Who's, who is it that is faithful to Jesus? Because I hope that uh, that's who we want to be. Uh, and today's passage shows us really clearly what a faithful disciple looks like. Uh, and as we listen to Jesus and watch the people around him react to him, We'll see three types of people as they make themselves known by their reactions to Jesus. Uh, look with me if you've got your Bible open there. John chapter 6 and we're right at the end of the chapter. So John chapter 6 uh, verses 68 to 69 uh, where we where we have a faithful disciple. Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. In verse 66, we see some flaky disciples. Uh, from this time on, uh, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. And then in verses 70 to 71, we see a fake disciple. Jesus replied, have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. And we're going to divide up our passage by looking at uh, those three types of followers of Jesus. Faithful disciples, flaky disciples and fake disciples. And my prayer is that God would use today to ensure that every single one of us is a faithful disciple and remains so. So then, first of all, faithful disciples. Peter's recognition of, of who Jesus's true identity is, uh, is a massively significant point in John's gospel. I wonder if you remember um, why John wrote his gospel. It, it's, he states why at the end, near, towards the end of what he wrote in chapter 20, verses 13, 31. He says this. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. That means lots of other things that he did while he was here on earth that uh, John didn't have space for to write about. Verse 31, but these things are written that ye may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing ye may have life in his name. You can see how similar that is to what uh, Simon Peter said. Lord, to whom shall we go? Ye have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. He's grasped some key truths about Jesus, hasn't he? He knows that Jesus is, is the one God had been promising for centuries and millennia. And here Peter is, right in front of Jesus, the promised one. The first mark of a faithful disciple is to believe the right things about Jesus. To whom else uh, should he, should we go? How else can we have eternal life? Well, notice too that Peter didn't come uh, to his correct understanding of Jesus through a hunch. How did he believe? Well, because of uh, because Jesus has the words of eternal life. Peter had believed Jesus' words, what Jesus said, what he still says. A faithful disciple believes Jesus' words 
because Jesus has spoken them. Jesus, the word, has spoken words. It's what Jesus and, and John have been saying about his words throughout the gospel so far. Chapter 3, verse 16, that most famous verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his uh, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And then 334, uh, for the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. The one who God has sent is Jesus. In chapter four, uh, after the woman at the well had, had run back to her village to tell the people about Jesus, uh, many of the Samaritans uh, from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I'd ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many of them became believers. A faithful disciple will listen to Jesus' words and believe them. Jesus will explain why this, why, why this is when we get to chapter 10. He'll tell us that his sheep, his, his followers, know his voice and they will follow him. Can you see that's exactly what Peter's done here? He's recognised Jesus' voice and he's followed Jesus as a result, just like sheep follow their shepherd. Of course, he's been able to do this because the father has drawn him towards Jesus, as we saw last week. It's not that he or us are any cleverer or, or more sensible than non-Christians. It is not because Peter or we just happened by chance uh, to be born at the right place and in the right time. No, it's not because of those things. It's because the Father drew Peter, has drawn us, if we're believers in Jesus' words. Drawn us if we're trusting in Jesus. And so we're able to hear what Jesus says, really hear, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe. Peter gives us the model to follow, doesn't he? To whom else would we go? Uh, why, why would we leave Jesus behind and, and uh, base our lives on anything or anyone else? Uh, Peter quite rightly says to Jesus, and by implication, uh, Jesus alone has the words of eternal life. That means that if we base our lives on any other religion, any other worldview, any other philosophy, whether that be Islam, Judaism, secularism, safetyism, uh, Buddhism, humanism, anything else. Then we'll have turned our backs on the only one who has the words of eternal life. And tragically, we'd not have eternal life, would we, if we did that? There's lots of talk of every death at the moment being a tragedy, isn't there? And, and every death is very, very sad. It's true, isn't it, that deaths are sad. But what's truly a tragedy is when someone dies who hasn't come to Jesus, who hasn't believed in him because, or, or, because the person who, who dies without trusting Jesus doesn't have eternal life, do they? Yes, it's really sad when a Christian dies. But we can take great comfort that they've gone to be with the Lord, that they're reaping the benefits of eternal life. But when someone dies who hasn't believed in Jesus because of his words, then that is a real tragedy. So keep coming to Jesus, the one who has the words of eternal life. Be a faithful disciple.